uh, as you can tell, uh, not only today, but for uh, the past many months or uh, the last couple of years, we've been having this robust uh, debate about public safety in the criminal justice system uh, throughout the state of New York. Uh, I, for one, believe that uh, we are failing New Yorkers and we are less safe today than we were uh, just a, a short two years ago. Uh, I have two questions uh, very briefly. Uh, does OCA have measures in place to address the perceived racism or uh, biases that um, exist? So in the event that uh, something like this uh, presented itself, um, are there measures in place uh, for OCA to deal with them directly? Yes, we have um, a robust investigative process when there are complaints of uh, bias or discrimination uh, happening in the court system. We have um, our own independent inspector, inspector general's office, uh, which will fully investigate and uh, make findings and recommendations. And if there is a finding of, of bias or discrimination, we have a zero tolerance policy now in the court system and we'll take uh, swift and, and appropriate action to address it. Um, and to uh, address uh, implicit bias, um, we were embarking on a mandatory uh, five-year um, uh, implicit bias, anti-bias training program for all judges and all staff in the court system. Um, it, it will be mandatory. It will, um, it will not be just a, a one and done presentation. It will be a series of, of educational programs for everyone um, over the course of a five-year period. And we're very um, excited about this and, and looking forward to this starting. And, um, uh, we, and we feel that effective training on bias will prevent bias. Your Honor, thank you. So not only do, have you had a strong program, uh, you've taken the steps uh, to uh, ensure that you have an even stronger and more robust program moving forward. Is that is that a fair assessment? Uh, yes, it is. Absolutely. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, secondly, I say this with all due respect. Uh, when Assemblyman Lawler asked you a question, I think you had referred to like your opinion didn't matter or what you felt uh, didn't matter specifically. I would say this uh, very uh, strongly that your opinion does in fact matter. Um, so I'm just looking for a yes or a no, uh, if you can. Uh, do you believe that if your judges uh, were able to make the determination from the bench, uh, the dangerousness of a defendant in front of them, uh, would that ability keep New Yorkers more safe? Yes or no? I think judges would, would be able to um, make a more informed um, and, and more effective decision about uh, issues like bail if they had uh, broader discretion to do so. So in, if they were able to weigh the dangerousness of the defendant in front of them, they would be able to make a more informed decision with respect to keeping New Yorkers safer? Um, uh, they, if they had, could you, I'm sorry, could you repeat that question? Yeah, um, I just want to. I just want to make sure I understood your answer. Uh, if if judges, in fact, could make that determination from the bench, uh, the dangerousness of the defendant in front of them, with respect uh, to, of what to do with the defendant, um, they could make a more informed decision uh, about whether or not to release them back uh, into the community or uh, to set bail. I think they, they could be, they, judges would feel that they would be able to make a, a more informed decision if they could take more information into account when making these decisions. Do you believe that as the chief administrative judge of the great state of New York? Uh, you know, I'm not sitting on criminal cases these days, so, uh, you know, I, I'm loath to uh, express my own opinion, but I'm here to uh, convey how judges feel as a group. And, and by the way, I'm not saying 100% of judges feel that way, but I'm confident in saying that uh, the great majority of judges who sit on criminal cases uh, would, would agree with that. Madam Chairwoman, thank you so much, Your Honor. Uh, thank you for answering my questions.